Partially overlapping translation may also be used where the target language typically makes use of specific collocations that happens to overlap in meaning with the meaning of the source language term. An example of this is وَخَيْرُ شَهْدٍ عَلَى ذلك, which is typically translated as the clearest evidence of this. The, word, uh, the phrase clearest evidence being more standard collocation in English than a literal best evidence. Clear or clearest and khair overlap with each other in meaning. Some but not all good things are clear and some but not all clear things are good. Another example is co-pre-predators which might typically be translated as co-pre-betrators uh, or the betrators of co-op okay co-op or men, co men of co-ops being quite abnormal in English pre-betrators and rijal overlap with each other some but not all pre Betrayers are men. Okay, it might be women, and some, but not all, men are pre-betrayers. There are, or could not, and could no doubt be men who have never pre-betrayed anything in their lives. Partial overlap is unacceptable if the omitted details in translation is important in the source text, but it is but is not implied in the overall context of the target text or if the added details clashes with the overall source text or target text context so if the target language does not offer suitable alternatives then only compensation can counteract the omission or addition thus in particular context it may be necessary to make plain that some one referred to as a teacher, as a translation of Arabic staza, is in fact female. In this case, the teacher's gender can be made plain through the introduction of pronoun she at an appropriate point in the target text. Okay, hope that's that makes the things clear. Let's talk about the uh, near synonyms and translation. Uh, in section 7.1, we consider synonyms and translation, and in section 7.1.2 and 7.13, hyponymy and hyponymy, and the related translation techniques of particularizing translation and generalizing translation, and in section 7.1.4, semantic overlap. And over overlapping translation. So in this section, we'll briefly consider the notion of near synonyms and near synonyms. Okay, as these are referred to on several subsequent occasion in this book. Near synonyms is a case not of synonym but hypernomy and hyponomy of semantic overlap which comes near to being synonyms. Thus, in the situation of near synonym involving hypernomy and hyponomy, typically in tightest things, for example, that can be referred to be a particular hypernomy, can also be referred to by, to, to by the hyponomy. An example of from English is a thin versus a skinny. Assuming the reason, uh, reasonableness of the statement such as she is thin but not skinny but not the statement she is skinny but not thin all skinny people are accordingly thin but not all thin people are skinny so thin is a hypernomy of skinny however there is a very significant overlap between thin and skinny such that thin people are typically also skinny. Thin and skinny can accordingly be regarded as a near synonym in English.
as the examples of thin versus skinny shows. Near synonyms is rather vague concept. It does not seem possible to see exactly how great the overlap between a hyper hypernomy and hyponomy pairs has to be for them to qualify as a near synonyms. Near synonyms remains, however, a useful concept in translation analysis. An example of near synonyms involving a hypernomy and hyponomy pair in English Arabic translation is translating the Arabic word Zalan as in English angry. Zalan as understood in Egypt and Sudan at least where the definition of standard Arabic usage of Zalan reflects the definition colloquial usage of Zalan means not just angry but angry with a degree of sadness. For example, sad, sadly angry. Arabic Zalan is thus Technically, hyponomy of English angry, as it excludes those cases of anger that do not also involve sadness. So, Zalan is, however, close enough to the meaning of angry to be considered a near synonym of angry. Another example, or an example of near synonym, involves semantic overlap in English is wood, in the sense of in the sense of collocation of trees growing more or less thickly together okay versus forest in the sense of extensive track in a land covered with trees and undergrowth okay assuming the uh, reasonableness of the following statements that's a wood not a forest that a forest not a wood you could call that either a forest or a wood that's it that some but not all woods are also forest and some but not all forests are also wood as with cases of near synonyms involving hyperonomy and hyponomy what is and and is not near synonymy involving cementing overlap is rather vague we cannot be sure how much semantic overlap is required for two words in particular sense to qualify as a near synonyms or how much semantic non-overlap there would need to be for them to qualify as not near synonyms. Nonetheless, the notion of near synonyms is already stated a useful one in practice.